Wednesday. Hey, everyone. Happy, what day are we on? Wednesday, Thursday, and um, Friday. This is my Visco Creator Session. Welcome. So we're going to be looking at photographing the mundane every day and uh, the beauty in the world that surrounds us, learning how to slow down and take it all in. And um, so we'll just get right into it. So a bit about me. I'm Andrea. I'm 23. I'm living in <laughs> Ireland uh, in a little village called Delgany in Wicklow in Ireland. I'm currently finishing up a master's in creative digital media and UX design. Uh, I'm a Visco ambassador, the plug. Uh, that last photo there is me in 2018, kind of when I started like taking photography a bit more seriously. Um, we set up a little like Santa's Grotto thing, a uh, photo booth thing in my school and we raised money for charity but like took everyone's photo and it was yeah it was a great time so that's kind of when I started getting more involved in photography and um, I had to dig deep for these two photos here they're the first photos I ever shared on Visco I don't know how many photos I posted but these two are fine there's not much to them they're taken on iPhone 5 edited with m3 as you can see here, I am really using the fade tool, which I quickly grew out of, thankfully. But um, that's just kind of where my photographic journey began. It's like in line with Visco and Visco presets. So it's just interesting to take a look back on. And it's just over eight years ago, which is crazy. So the first camera I ever got was a Canon power shot. It was given to me by my parents in 20. 17 2016 uh for christmas and if anyone anyone who knows me who's close to me will know that i took the famous moon pictures with this camera i still have that camera i still use it it's a beauty um not that expensive pretty cheap actually has wi-fi has the whole thing and the zoom on it is insane um here are just some photos of the moon but this was like the first thing i was pretty interested in um that and I got really into long exposure photography and like shooting the stars and that was like the first thing that got me like really into like obsessed with photography um so everyone who knows me will know these photos this is how I started uh, just a few more so these two cameras and uh, these are the more recent ones I've been using kind of all the photos you'll see in the presentation coming up are taken on either of these um, the Canon 1300D, again, a great camera. I have a few different lenses for that one. Um, it's kind of been neglected now for the Fujifilm, which I got a few months or a year ago now, but I can't put the Fujifilm down. It's beautiful. It's insane. The photos I'm getting from it are incre incredible. Um, but yeah, these are just the two recent ones I'm using kind of heavily. So getting into photographing the mundane, I guess like... The title, maybe some people will find the title of this vague, like what is the mundane, but it's just like your everyday surroundings, whatever that may be. Like for me, the first thing I experience is like my back garden. That's like how I start every day. I can't go anywhere without stepping into my back garden. But for some people, maybe it's like their busy commute to work or their busy commute home from work. Or if you're in an apartment, stepping out onto the street of your apartment block or anything like that, just like your immediate surroundings every day so getting into how I get inspired to take photos and um, sometimes I find myself in a bit of a slump and um, I don't want to take photos it's raining outside I'll come up with any excuse and um, it's not too often I get like this but if ever I'm in need of a, like a little boost um, these are some of the things I do to inspire me so these two Katie and Max they created like a YouTube segment seven years ago. The videos are also up there. If you need anything to inspire you to get you better at photography, go back and watch these two. They're hilarious. The videos are amazing. Um, about 20 episodes, one, one minute to seven minutes long, short, snappy, quick, and they go through everything. Um, they talk about shooting people, shooting golden hour, food and drink. Uh, street photography and they do a little a uh, few episodes on like shooting outside your doorstep and just the videos are great and um, I would really recommend getting into that not even just to be inspired but like 
to to learn more and to like improve and build on yourself and um, would really go back like even sometimes I return to them and the videos are seven years old and they're just as good like they're incredible so definitely watch them if you're looking to get into photography more take more seriously and they do a lot on like compositional techniques which I think this was like the foundation for me on like shooting properly like they, they go through like the fundamentals so they're really good um, another thing is just going on photo walks I'd say 90% of my photography is just me taking a walk by myself usually I know in America it's a thing um, like going on photo walks with like big groups of people not so much in Ireland I wish it was but um, yeah just it, for me it's just like popping in my earphones zoning out taking a walk going up to the woods going down to the beach just like slowly taking in your environment taking time out just like downtime to just relax and like look at the world around you and the beauty that surrounds you that we just totally don't even notice um on like a regular day um another thing i use if i'm in a sort of a slump i came across this guy recently uh, it's like the walkie talkie series i don't know if anyone is familiar with it it's by a guy called paulie b this guy here he like follows mainly just street photographers in like a day in the life sort of thing and he has a conversation with them he's behind the camera and he just films them um, but like he shows the whole process of the, of the day and like shares the photos as they're snapping and uh, as they're snapping them and it's just great and you learn so much about how these like these people are like doing photography for a living um, and you just learn like the way they are looking at the world kind of thing and um, so that's something I love and will always you know look look at he's making videos still there's about 30 there now but they're still he's still making some uh, other creators that inspire me and um, these three guys are just some of them a lot of people will be familiar with Willem and um, he's the long weekend gear guy uh, his YouTube videos are beautiful they're like masterpieces every time um, but he shoots a lot of film which isn't really my thing but just his YouTube videos just like really they're they're shot beautifully they don't even just make me want to photograph they make me want to like film videos they're just he's he's very inspiring and again he's more like a shooting around your neighborhood sort of thing and um, Trevor Wisecup I found through the walkie talkie series he is a character he's a very interesting man he's uh he does a lot of street photography and it's very quick and uses the flash quite a bit um, but his work is really interesting and again another Visco ambassador I'll have to shout out is Brian I've been following him I don't even know since when I've been following him he's B or WP on Visco. If you use Visco, you'll definitely know who he is. Um, he's a great guy. He, I think me and him shoot a lot of the same things, like the mundane every day around your, around where you live and just, you know, we're not these nature or concert photographers. We're just like basic everyday beauty sort of thing. So those are three people I gain a lot of inspiration from. Also, the other Visco ambassadors, um, Erica, Robert, Arjun, you all know who you are, you're amazing. Um, going on to some like te more technical things, framing composition, um, always important. I think that's probably like the number one thing for taking good photos. I'm really picky with like aligning everything, making sure it's like straight. Um, I just think that makes for like just a good photo to begin with. Um, something I do that I don't even notice I'm doing, but um, when Maya and Luciana asked me to do this, I kind of had to think more about how I like consciously take photographs. When I do, it's, I, I really, I'm not thinking about it at all. So it's kind of just all like in my head. But if you look at these two photos, where is your eye like following? Like where is the, what path is the photo bringing you on? And you can see it here like around the curve of the, the road. This one is taken in Stevens Green in Dublin for anyone who's been, doesn't even look like it's Dublin. It could be like New York or something. And just, it's just a beautiful photo, even, even nicer in black and white and just the curve in the street. And that's your, that's where the eye is following. And the same with the second one taken in Hoth. And there's so many lines, but these are two, the two kind of main ones. Um, it's just like the path it's following. I just think, that leading lines is very important technique. Um, another example here, shot in Bray. 
uh, my friend Jack at the bottom there. If you look like down the slope, up and around the cliff, just like framing and leading lines, just important. Think of like what, do you think the image would look good in a frame kind of thing? That's, I guess that's how I look at it. Um, another big thing is symmetry. There's symmetry and there's asymmetry and everything, but um, cars is one thing that most likely all cars are symmetrical. I know there's those stupid cars that have the number plate in like the bottom left corner in the right square. And it's like, they don't make for a good photo, but these cars, you know, they're very symmetrical and you get crouched down low get a bit of the background in, but it's just like mainly the car and it's just beautiful, symmetrical, just a generally nice photo. I took them both on my iPhone. You don't need anything expensive to take a good photo, I guess. Um, so that is that. And then next, oh yeah. This photo I took a few weeks ago in Antibes in France. Looks like an awful photo. Um, not aligned whatsoever. A lot of busyness, no preset, pretty dull colors. I took that on the Fujifilm, surprisingly enough. Um, and I was in a very swivel when I took it. But if we just remove all this busyness, crop it right down, align it properly. If I had taken it on the Visco app using the camera, they have a, like a nifty little tool that aligns it properly. But uh, you end up with this totally different photo. You've cropped it right down, different story to it. The pattern on the ground is really interesting. The oranges and the blues and the hues, they're just like popping out at you. It just looks like, like an endless long plane. And like, again, the leading lines, like where are these people walking to? There's no busyness, it's just simple. And you've like brought it right down and blown it up completely. So I used F4, 4X was the preset. I've cropped it, I've aligned it. And it's just like a totally new image. And I just like that one. It just turned out nicely somehow. Um, layout and alignment then. Again, these two taken on my iPhone. This one, these are just, these images are so like doable. I feel like anyone could do this first image for once. Um, I walked down to the beach, collected some pebbles, brought them home, laid them out on like an A4 sheet of paper or card or something and used the HSL tool to like boost those red colors. And that did really well on Visco. People love that one. And it's just so doable, so easy. And it's like all the rocks are like placed the same distance apart from each other. And it's just a nice photograph. Uh, same with this one. Um, just like there's like three main colors in this. It's aligned correctly. You can see here and like the shadows of the fishermen. And it's just like a nice, just a nice photo. Um, so I guess if you're going about photographing the mundane around you. You wanna start with what are your immediate surroundings? For me, it's my back garden. Um, so looking closely at things, came across this spider web that was like caught in, in the middle of a fence and the light was just shining on it at the right moment. Um, I took that last week. It was during like sunset or something. And it just, it's a, such a simple photograph. Anyone can take a photo of a spider web and it's just, patience and getting the light just about right and just waiting for the right time same with this one looking up messing around with the focus on my camera and there's not much to these photos there's one subject there's a few colors but they end up to be you know I'm, I'm happy with these images you know rainy days again it's lashing rain here right now but um I never think I'm going to get good photographs after it's raining or while it's raining I hate the rain um but these two they just, they look good side by side. They turned out well. There's like two colors, like the three colors, the blacks, the oranges, the greens. And the, especially this one, like they pop out. You can see all the raindrops after it's been raining, like getting down really close into this puddle. And like, there's, they're so simple, but they're just effective. And the color is like the vibrancy of the orange. I can't remember what preset I used. I'm gonna guess A6, A6 Pro maybe, um, but it just works. Um, Next, oh, and it's glitching a bit. Um, again, this was different time of day, different weather conditions completely, like golden hour, sunset time. Uh, I shot this on my Fujifilm. 
so uh the fuji like the way it blacks are like really black and it makes everything really sharp so the grass here is very textured you can almost see like each individual blade of grass and like the football is in the center it's just the one subject the same here the bit of the light is shining on these flowers and there could have been any subject there could have been anything instead of that football or instead of those flowers still would have been a nice photo because of the the grass and the texture and the time of day and the way the light was hitting everything um oh yeah continuing on looking for like obscure unusual things like you don't really pay attention to usually so i guess like a bug or an insect had eaten out of this leaf and the it was the shadow was like bouncing onto the wall behind it and it's just like an unusual image like you really get like the texture of the leaf um and the background is all blurred it's just something unusual you have like the curve and the leaf here it's just a different kind of image same here someone had walked through the wet grass and the footprint of boot was like being pressed onto the patio and it's just something that looks different that if you were just running out the door you wouldn't catch if you weren't like slowing down paying attention um onto this uh the shed in my back garden we had a storm a while ago and the shed got like torn to pieces the roof came off the bottom of it all was like ripped up and um, so like there was a hole in it here as you can see and you could see like right through the grass and um, so i just like picked these two flowers and placed them in like sort of the flowers were like growing through they weren't but like as if they were like growing through the wood kind of thing took a few photos from far away and took some close-up ones and they're just simple and effective and uh, I just enjoy those photos it's the the sun was shining again probably sunset um, and it was nice lighting and they're just simple but but still beautiful and effective so looking at new perspectives so I feel like when I started photography I was shooting everything like this like straight on dead on and I, I needed to switch it up and get some different angles, different point of views going. I began like shooting through things like here, like I'm shooting through this chair to get to the subject. I'm shooting through my friend's arm here at the subject, but it's just making that image just that bit more interesting. Like it's adding another like dimensional layer. Um, it could also be like you were shooting through a tree with like leaves in at the subject. You're just trying to add that like extra layer to make it just that bit more interesting. Um, again here, shooting from above, and um, this always gets like really like textured images, um, like the texture of the sand, of the shell, the footprint, the dogs, like paw prints, everything. You see so much here. There's one subject, but there's so many different textures. Again, with this one, by the sea, the bubbles, the orange stones, um, it's just beautiful and and uh, the way the light is like illuminating everything and um, even though it's a busy photo it's still beautiful and very textured and um, shooting from above again i feel like i used to always take photos of my mom's flowers like again just like looking at the flower like this instead of getting up over the flowers to see all of them i took a few different ones here and there's a lot of like bees in them just nice photos and um, this one i shared like two weeks ago it did it has done quite well in visco that one i took on my iphone and it's on a like table with like a black tarp on it it took it i took the photo at like 7 a.m whatever way the light was shining it made it look like it was blue and these like raindrops are like magnifying as luciana pointed out to me yesterday magnifying the like thread like woven into the tarp and um, if you zoom like you can see up close but just like the little hints of yellow, just a beautiful photo and um, simple. Anyone can take it. Everyone has like a phone or an iPhone or an Android, just um, waiting for the right light, I guess. And just the way all the bubbles formed again, um, so many different ones to look at. You kind of want to look at almost every single one and the shadows are all being pulled this way. And at first you would think like that the raindrops were, you were looking at them face on, but like, when I told the others that I was looking at them from above, it just like gives you a different perspective in your head. Reflections are another thing. Um, 
I love puddles, not actual actually puddles, like shooting subjects through the puddles, um, whether it's like my reflection or the reflection of trees, like this photo, like putting it in black and white and adding like a dark vignette to it. It just gives a really gloomy, like rainy day kind of photo. Looks nicer than just shooting the, the puddle um, if you look like through it. Same with this. I think I just got on the Fujifilm this day. Um, just very vivid and the reflection is so sharp and crisp. Um, instead of like, I could have cropped it out. I could have cropped out the reflection, just had the bottle, but it just gives that another like layer to the photo. Um, another example of like mirroring or reflections. Um, we had, I had these trees in my back garden and the trees behind me, the, their shadow was kind of like mimicking the shape of the trees that were above. I guess that was just being in the right place at the right time and just like observing things more closely. Um, but I really liked that photo, like the closer I looked at it, I knew there was something I liked about it. And then I could see it's like mirroring. Um, here, like, again, anyone that knows me will know they've seen these hills in every photo. This is like my back garden, but diff on different days. So just shooting the same subjects, like the importance of shooting the same subject at different times of the day during different weather conditions, during different like light or like it's rain or sun or whatever. Um, the difference in these two photos. Um, you can see like the hills are so golden here and like over here, it's like the silhouettes of the trees and like the shape of all the shadows. And they're just two very different photos of the exact same thing. And just like the differences you can get. And um, I just love them. So it just like, again, like reiterates the importance of like slowing down, relaxing, being patient, taking in your surroundings. Um, Cause I feel like probably none of us do that because everyone is so busy all the time. Um, so here's an example. I took these on my iPhone. Um, it's fine, that photo, there's not much to it. There's like three or four layers, a bench. It's an okay photo, but if you just waited like a second later and it's a whole different image the man walking through his shadow, the symmetry of the two benches. And the fact that I've put the image in black and white, it's like lighting up that smoke there. And then like the pool bag terrace in the background. And um, I can say I way prefer this photo to this one. It's not much to this one. There's a story to this one. Uh, same thing here. I was just like standing on a street in Florence in Italy and I was I had just been in this sandwich shop and I was waiting for this guy to leave because I could see he was in like an all yellow suit and just waiting that second to get the image of him walking down the street just like this 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 photo is like bursting with like oranges and yellows and it's just nice warm like interesting like he looks like a such a character like just a very interesting photograph and that's just like the importance of like standing there and just waiting even though I probably look like a weirdo standing there waiting to get this man's photograph that he had no idea about but Great photo. Um, another example of this, the cliffs of Moher. Um, I was like standing on top of the stairs, like pointing my camera downwards and uh, wait, watching this man playing the accordion, not wanting to get in his way, but I could see this woman was walking up bed to like throw some coins into his hat. And again, I just got just the right moment. Well, so I don't to interrupt you, Andrea, but I just want to point out that like I super love that you can do that. I think that's one of the things that I always struggle with. It's just like, I need to chill in this spot, be really aware of my surroundings. Like you saw that beautiful, you know, storefront in Italy, you decided to sit down, maybe you had some tea or whatever. And you're like, I'm just going to chill here. And because of that, like being aware and being present, you were able to capture this moment that if you just sat down and did a, your, our normal kind of quick routine, then you would not have seen that. And I think that like for every, all the images you're doing, it's about this, like really slowing down and being present and kind of grounded in the moment. Yeah. Um, it's just beautiful. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I take such inspiration from that. And like the last few days, I've been just like looking at every little nook and cranny of like my interior space. Cause I feel like that's something I don't do. And just like finding the little crack on the wall or the little thing that I've never seen before. And it's making me see like just my visual world in like a totally different light. So thank you for that. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, it's really important though. Like paying attention to like the things that we don't necessarily always look at. And just like getting lost in it and getting lost in uh, the whole act of like taking photos. So like, again, paying close attention to the finer details 
I was just like walking, like leaving the woods that are near my house and like turned to the left. And I just saw this bench. Like, this was a while ago. So I'm going to guess that the bench is like even more, like all the leaves are even more overgrown. No one is sitting on a bench. No one cares about that bench. It's just, there's like a, there's like a story to the image. It would have been an okay photo but if the leaves weren't overgrown, but it just makes it just that one bit more interesting. So like looking out for like hidden things. Um, I guess this is kind of like life imitating art. This photo I love, took on my iPhone. Um, you can see me in the reflection, which I don't so much mind, but uh, it was like during December of last year and there's a Christmas tree in the window and I was just trying to get the Christmas tree in the, the window, but someone pointed out to me that the little fence like looks like Christmas trees. And I just didn't see that the first time I was taking the photo. And I was like, oh, now I, I like this image way more. Um, another thing, repetition, this was in Nice. Um, the photo would still be nice, even if all these people weren't like sitting in these spots, because it would be like the repetition of the chairs. But it's just a nice calming image, the oranges and the blues, and it's just like a warm, calm picture. Um, and I just I just love the repetition. Um, again, the juxtapositions here. This is kind of inspired by uh, Brian, because I know he takes a lot of like, there was a photo he took with um, the flowers hanging over like an old car, and like this, this old like, beat up banger sort of and um, the nice beautiful flowers, just the contrast between the two subjects, just makes for a more interesting photo. Okay, editing with Visco Pro, I think I've decided to go for C8 Pro, I could have gone for A6 Pro, I know it's the superior one. I know everyone else thinks that as well. Um, but I challenged myself to just go on a little trip, a day trip to Dunmore East and edit all my photos with Just C8 Pro. Um, so the good thing about all these new Pro presets is that within the preset itself, you can edit the strength, the contrast, the color, the tone. You can't do that on the regular presets. And just like, um, it just adds a little bit more creativity to the whole editing process. A tip Zach was giving in the last creator session was like pulling this up to the top and then back down to the bottom to really see like the differences you're looking for in the photos and like what you want the photos to look like yourself um some more examples with the c8 pro just like the house in the background here the ivy the symmetry um it's just the the there's like with c8 pro it's like the oranges are really orange and they're vibrant and the yellows as well and then like the blues and the grays and the black are more muted and neutral and i just actually didn't think I would like C8 Pro as much as I did, but I love it. And another example here, getting a new perspective of these um, boats, like stepping onto the cliff and looking at them and then taking a step back and shooting through the houses. And there's, again, like the leading lines, like into the bay. Um, it's beautiful. So a little quick bonus um, round, emulating film with BISCOX. This isn't really uh, photographing the mundane so much but it's just something that I've been doing recently that I thought I would talk about. Um, I found this little camera on my mom's old Coolpix S3000. I'm sure a few of you have these in your house and you don't even know. They're like, I don't even know what year it was made or anything. It, I've been using it like it's a point and shoot, been using just the flash. It's tiny, fits into my pocket. Such a nifty camera. Um, I, I bring it on like nights out, like if I'm going for some drinks, um, I shoot mainly with the flash on it and it just gives this interesting look like I'm shooting with film even though I'm not paying the expensive price of film and I take the photos and then I don't look at them again until like two or three days later so it's like I'm waiting for them to develop sort of thing and they turn out like this you can't tell me that doesn't look like film and like just I don't know what presets I used here but I have a lot of recipes I'll share them in the space I don't want if people are looking but I overlooked Visco effects for the longest time with like the grain and the split tone and the frames and the light leaks. I just think they just they just give re this really nice look to the photos um, and the textures as well. Uh, I'm just having really fun with that camera. So I'll I'll share those recipes if anyone's looking for them. But they're it's just it's just a fun fun little camera. Um, so finally to finish up. And I guess some like final tips and tricks for like slowing down, shooting what's around you. And it's to like step outside of the box. Like don't confine yourself to like 
one genre or one type of photography I feel like a lot of people would ask me like oh what do you photograph and I'm just like I just take photos of everything like I don't like I think like that guy Trevor Weisskopf I'm just a photographer of the life of everything I'm not a concert photographer I'm not a wildlife photographer I'm just everything so don't like don't put yourself in the box like step outside of it um use your iPhone more if you don't have money to burn I don't have money to burn um adjust the exposure that was like I, I remember figuring that out and it was like groundbreaking I'm sure most people know about it now uh sharpening the image I always do that in Visco if I'm uploading a story um plus 0.1 on the sharpen and plus 0.1 on the clarity take the photo in 916 and put it to your story and it's always really nice um enjoy it have fun get lost in it um don't stress yourself out with like needing to create something amazing every time um like every time you step out the door just have fun don't put pressure on yourself and the best things happen unexpectedly always um so what i was saying at the beginning if you scan that qr code you should it should bring you to like a invite contributors link um, you can share what you've learned if you've learned anything um over the next few days tomorrow for the world photography day and um, I'll be looking at all the photos and I'll be sharing some more recipes and some more like beauty in the mundane photos, I guess. So I'll just give people a sec to scan it if they want. And I will take a sip of water and remember to breathe. <laughs> yeah, join the space, y'all. Um, all you have to do is just use your, your phone to scan the QR code. And I think it's another great way to just like keep the conversation going with Andrea. Yeah. There's more things you want to learn or get feedback from or whatever, share your stuff about the mundane. This is going to be a great place to do it and keep this conversation going for, for days and days, which is amazing. Thank you for yeah. sharing that extra bit of your energy and time with everyone. Yeah. D DM me or share it in there and I'll respond to everything. Or if you're looking for any of those recipes. Um, and just before we do the q and I just want to, again, I want to thank Maya and Luciana for letting me do this, but I just want to dedicate this presentation to just a dear friend who passed away two days ago. Um, she's a lovely woman. I know some people will know who I'm talking about who are watching, so I just want to dedicate this to her.